What's up y'all? My name is Jess. Welcome to my greenhouse here at Roots and Refuge Farm. I've been intending to shoot this video for several days. Uh, I keep not doing it and because of that now it's going to be a little different video than I had originally intended. It's really windy outside so we're not going to stay outside for very long. First I want to tell you a little bit about my greenhouse. My darling husband Maya built this greenhouse for me at the beginning of last year um, out of repurposed windows. We have two videos of that and I will link both of them below. We have a time-lapse video that shows like the entire build and then sort of shows a tour of all the details and then he also did a very extensive step-by-step -step video if you are looking to do something like this yourself. This greenhouse is great. It uh, holds heat really really well being glass. Actually the issue I'm having right now is that it is getting maybe too hot in here. Um, I'll get to that later. I have another greenhouse as well that is a Frankenstein from many repairs on what was originally a Harbor Freight kit. Most of it at this point is aftermarket and it's what we've added to it to fix it. And I didn't end up needing to use that greenhouse this year because of all of the lockdown and all of that. Um, I ended up giving away a lot of plants early and not planting as many as I would normally because I would normally be selling plants and I ended up pulling back on those efforts because I realized I wasn't gonna be selling them anywhere. I have a lot of plants in this greenhouse though. It is pretty full. I just wanted to show you guys today what is going on in here, give you kind of a tour of my greenhouse. I actually needed to plant a lot of this stuff out last week, but we had cold weather come through. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of a good, the bad, and the ugly kind of situation. Everything in here is not perfect and pristine. At this point, most days I'm coming down here propping this door open. We also have these windows that open automatically when it gets to a certain heat in here. Those pop open, but it's really not enough ventilation. It's fine earlier on in the spring, but at this point when it's really sunny and it's already 75 to 80 degrees outside, uh, those windows just don't cut it. and It'll be over 100 in here if we don't get the door open. Also have a fan here in the corner, which I have off right now because I'm shooting this video, but that stays on almost all the time. That fan serves two purposes. It obviously keeps the air moving, which brings cooler air in from outside and just keeps the overall temperature down when the door is open and it is really sunny and it's starting to get hot in here. But the first purpose for that fan, I run that fan long before I'm trying to ventilate the greenhouse, and that is to make sure that my plants in here are strong because air moving is really important. If you're gonna be growing plants, in a controlled environment, a lot of times you'll get really weak stems if there's no air movement. And so that just gives them a little bit of something to work against so that they can grow strong. I also spend a lot of time coming in and just rubbing my hands over these plants, especially when they're much smaller seedlings. Don't do it so much now, it's not really necessary, but when they're smaller, uh, I touch them quite a lot. As you can see here, we have a lot of stuff on the floor. Uh, we're pretty cram packed, but that is because my top shelf is getting super hot right now. Uh, next year, I will actually have shade cloth to put up here, um, especially on this back run, because that is the area that seems to be capturing the most heat. It's also just really bright. And these plants were on the top shelf. And as you can see, they're kind of sun damaged. Uh, since moving them down to this shelf, I feel like they're looking a lot better. This tray was actually also up there and you can just see that they were struggling. They These were planted at the same time as these and these on the lower shelf are just doing a whole lot better than these few trays. Gardening is a process of figuring out what works. I just didn't know that we were going to need to do something different. I, I didn't garden. Uh, fully in this greenhouse last year. We had just gotten it and I did use it some, but I never completely filled it up with plants and I used it over the winter some, but never filled to the brim. And so this was the first time I ran into that being an issue. Let me give you one of my most important mental tools in the garden. There's always next year. 
Now, I know that feels like a cop out when you first get started and you're gung ho and you're like super excited to grow an amazing garden. Uh, but one thing that is very empowering as a gardener is to know that there are lessons you're gonna learn along the way and it's exciting to know that you're gonna be able to apply those next year, that you're going to be able to do better, that you're gonna be able to be prepared. Like next year, I'll have shade cloth ready and whenever we come into the season where it starts getting really bright and the sun starts being a lot harsher, I'll be ready to throw that shade cloth up there and I won't lose any plants or damage any plants because of it. That's exciting for me. I'm not bummed that this happened this year. I ran into a problem and I learned and I'll adapt. There's always next year is not a cop out. It's a promise that you are putting these lessons in the bank and you're going to be able to use them next year. Because of that little issue though, that's one of the things now I have all of this stuff down on the floor. It's a little harder to get around in here. I'm probably gonna be a little harder to show you around, but we'll work it out. Right here, one of my sun damaged trays and actually all three of my sun damaged trays of tomatoes. These are all climbing triple crops, which is one of my favorite types of heirloom tomatoes. I cannot remember where I originally got these seeds and they're sold at a few places online and there are different variations. You'll find it spelled different ways. But at this point, the seeds that I'm growing are ones that I save from my own plants. And these I actually started a lot of. I started many trays because I was planning on selling these at the Shindig. It worked out though because in between the period of us starting seeds and canceling the shindig due to COVID, um, we decided that we were going to build a high tunnel in the backyard and we were gonna plant a lot more tomatoes than usual. So one of the main tomatoes that's gonna be grown in that high tunnel is climbing triple crop. I'm gonna grow a lot of them. I love it because it is very productive. The biggest tomatoes I've grown here on my farm were all climbing triple crops. It's a really, really big producer. And I think it's gonna do really well in the greenhouse because it was actually developed as a hothouse tomato. It's gonna do awesome and I'm really excited that it worked out that I had multiple trays of extras to be able to plant in that greenhouse. I suppose we will look at the tomatoes since that's the topic that we're on. Now let's take a quick look at the other tomatoes that I have. Now here's something that's going on. I said we were going to see some ugly stuff. Now I've got some stuff back here. These tomatoes are kind of flopping over. It, it, simply what happens here it, whenever you have big trays like this is that some of these are struggling for light at this point because of the fact that they're all packed in and you've got really big plants that are going to soak up a lot of water and unfortunately the little guys kind of get the short end of the stick. I just watered these some more um, because that's why these were flopping over. But what I really think that I'm going to do as I decide exactly what all I'm going to plant is I'll separate out and I'll put my bigger plants in trays and my smaller plants in trays. So as I harden them off, they will have a chance instead of having to compete with these guys. These are all different varieties though. Like here's an Amy's apricot cherry. This, these seeds were given to me by a gentleman at a local seed swap last year, and it was after I'd already started my tomatoes, so I was glad to get to start it this year. Um, giant Belgium, Hillbilly, oh, Black Cherry, I forgot I started that one. I thought this was funny. You see this single dark tomato stalk sticking up here? Check out those bottom water roots there. This is a Wild Boar Farms Dark Galaxy, which is a really, really high in anthocyanins tomato. It's got a lot of purple in it. And you see that color showing up in the stalk here. And check out those roots. Sorry, guy. It's just, he'll be okay. He'll grow new ones down there. Now I'm going to do a video when I plant, giving you like the list of all of the tomatoes I ended up planting this year. But these trays, these four trays are almost entirely mixed. Um, and this one, that one's mixed too. These, these are all different kinds. Like I have some that there are repetitions, like there are about 10 Arkansas Travelers here and like three Mortgage Lifters and then there's San Marzano and Black Brandywine, um, Azoichka, 
Costoluto Genovese, Jersey Devil, Sweetie. They're just all mixed in. These are all different kinds. Over here, I have some trays that are full of the same thing. I've got two trays here of Abe Lincoln, which is one that is very highly requested. It's why I started a lot of them. Um, I'm going to be growing quite a few of these. As you can see, some of these are getting really tall, uh, but they're good and strong, so they'll be fine. And then back here, I have a couple of trays of Dr. Witchy's Yellow, which is one of my favorite tomatoes in the whole wide world. Um, these two trays are full of that, and I'm going to be growing a lot of those. Uh, this sad tray down here is, this is the result of not properly hardening off. Uh, these plants got a pretty bad sunburn because I put them outside and left them outside too long. Yeah, so that does happen. These are all climbing triple crop. I have another tray that looks just like it that I unintentionally sunburned, also climbing triple crop. They actually will survive this though. They have a little bit of damage, but they'll grow new leaves that aren't damaged and I will just gently harden them off between now and when we plant them out and they'll be okay. Over here is another tray of mix match. I've been hardening these off. You can kind of see how they're a little darker in color than those other ones were. Um, and I was just kind of playing around with starting to harden some things off. I'm about to get really committed to moving these out every day now that I know that our frost has passed. These are all mixed as well. Thornburn's terracotta is one that I just saw Amish paste. These are blueberries and Brad, Brad's Atomic Grapes. Again, uh, very high in anthocyanins, and you can kind of see the purple in those stems. Here's something kind of interesting. This is a plant that I purchased. This is actually a hybrid called Sun Sugar that I like, but um, I didn't start any of them. And I just wanted to have some in the garden, so I just bought one plant from a local store. And as you, do you see how dark these are in color versus these? As plants get hardened off, you're going to see them develop that much darker color. And that really just shows that they're ready to go out. And these plants are going to be much more susceptible to sunburn because they're not hardened off. Now look at these compared to these, which haven't gone out at all. These leaves are really, really tender. Interestingly, I have plants at different areas of this greenhouse that are different shades of green because like these on this wall, they get the early morning sun. And so they're getting more exposure while they're very exposed to bright sun. These guys over here are not. They're a little more shaded from the greenhouse itself. I just think that's fascinating that they're getting different levels of sunlight, therefore they're different levels of tenderness. Over here is kind of a mess. Uh, these are Black Beauty tomatoes. Again, check out those purple stems. Now sometimes you'll see purple coloring come up in the leaves of your tomatoes and it's actually a sign of deficiency. And if you start seeing a lot of your leaves turn purple underneath, kind of like these in the climbing cr triple crop, which are not uh, a plant that has a lot of anthocyanins, this is actually a deficiency. Now these were the plants that were up there exposed to the sunlight too much. And so they're just struggling a little bit. They'll be fine, they'll snap back. These Abe Lincolns have a little bit of purpling. That's not a huge deal. Like if you're seeing your seedlings curl a little, the, le the leaves flip up a little, a little purpling, um, especially at this stage. When you've got plants that have been growing in these pots for six to eight weeks, they're, they're out of nutrients is basically what it is. And you can do a very mild liquid fertilizer don't supersize it. It's not McDonald's. B bigger is not better. Follow the instructions. Do a very mild fertilizer. Uh, don't overdo it because that can be detrimental. Uh, and that can help with that. Sometimes, however, it is actually just a trait of the plant. If you have a plant that produces a fruit that's like really purple, uh, you're going to see that come through in the leaves and the stem. And that's all that's happening here with the Black Beauties. And they're looking really good. This whole tray is Black Beauty. And then here is Blue Beauty. So again, a very purple variety, Wild Boar Farms, some of my favorite tomatoes. This is kind of a mix over here of some things that I uh, potted up, some of which are not doing well. This is just because they're here getting this really bright sun and uh, they needed water. I've got a couple of tomatillos here the queen of Manalco, and then I've got a few peppers. This is Aros con pollo peppers. 
of random tomatoes without markers. These are what is left over from where I started a bunch of plants, separated a lot of them out, and just left some seeds in there. Same thing here, looking rough. These were basically kind of like cast offs that I wasn't worried about trying to save. Y'all been asking for a tour and now I'm giving you the real deal. You don't judge me for all my dying plants. <laughs> Seriously, when the shindig was canceled, a lot of this stuff I decided to stop uh, putting the work in. That's what happened here. Like I decided not to spend two days separating out all the rest of these seedlings when I wasn't sure how or when I was going to sell them. Um, I gave a lot of these little trays full of seedlings to a friend of mine who uh, separated them out to sell them, but uh, otherwise I just kind of let it go. And that's what's going on back here. These are tomatoes, which interestingly, these are the same cells that all of these came out of, but those were separated and allowed to grow and these were not. And so I've just got multiple plants in these little plugs. And I may still pull some of these and separate them, up pot them and grow them. I'm not sure yet. All this stuff I am growing. I just haven't um, planted it yet. These are actually my cucamelons right here and they're all growing together. Those are getting planted out soon. I've got a bunch of yarrow in here as well as some oregano. That's oregano. And all of these I will just go ahead and pot up and start uh, hardening these off. That'll happen once I begin moving the trays out, hardening them out. Those will get potted up because I'll have more room to put them places. Here on the ground, these are our pineapple uh, ground cherries. These just take a really long time to get going. Uh, so if you're growing ground cherries and they just seem like they're taking forever, don't freak out. These were started at the same time as all these tomatoes. They were at the exact same time. Uh, they took that much longer to germinate and then I separated them. They've probably doubled in size in the week since I separated them. And at some point they will just take off and grow like crazy. Some things are like that. They just take a long time. You have to be really patient whenever you're starting certain things. Back here I've got a lot of random flowers um, and these are, have been getting stuck out in the perennial garden as there has been time and space. And now that we've got these other beds filled I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of those out of here and everywhere where you see these tiny little plugs which will fill out these are those starts from that tray. And as soon as they get space they just explode like here. I moved these things out here like a week ago. So you can see they've quadrupled in size since I put them out here. Same thing with the nasturtiums growing here. Those were all started in that tray. And there's still a lot of great stuff in here that I'm going to fill out. It's funny because some of these things have started to flower. Like these are alyssums that have started to flower. But I can still move this out and they'll spread their legs and spread out in the garden. This is not the ideal way to do it uh, as far as letting it go this long. The tray was great. Uh, ideally, I would have moved all these things out about a week and a half or two ago. However, we weren't ready. To f we weren't done finishing the beds. So I'll just do what I can now. Here I've got some status, sm uh, smoky fennel, toothache plant, alyssum. There's some nasturtium. Here's some dill. I'm excited to move that out. These are Cosmos right here. There's a little baby coleus. Check that out. Isn't that pretty? All right, we are all over the place. Up here, this is holy basil. All of these are holy basil starts. And this is summer savory. A lot of those herbs are going in this herb spiral right there. If y'all can see that, it's gonna be so pretty. Speaking of herbs, I've got random little six packs of varieties of basil all over the place here. Got quite a few of those. And these will just randomly go all over the garden. Plant a ton of basil. It's a great companion plant and I love it. Basil is what summer tastes like to me. Seriously, pesto. I love pesto. And basil lemonade is... Oh, I love basil lemonade. And the way that I just make that is just make lemonade, like squeeze lemons and sugar or you can do agave or honey if you like your lemonade with that instead 
and then water and then I like to just like crush a whole bunch of basil and put it in there and it's really good if you have like strawberry simple syrup as well strawberry basil lemonade <sighs> That's what I think of whenever I start so much basil. I've already planted out a lot of basil and it made it through our cold nights. And so there's already a lot out there, but I will probably plant something like 30 or 40 plants of different kinds of basil in my garden during the uh, spring because it just, I love it. I love, and the, the pollinators love it once it goes to flower and it, I just, it tastes like summer to me. Down here are cucumbers and squash. Let's see, the Ancash Market Cuke, Wisconsin SMR, Armenian Yard Long, Max Pack, um, Silver Slicer, and this doesn't have a tag, hold on, give me a second. The Deze Squash, um, that's like a small yellow squash is what that is I remember that one now I did the cucumbers and the squash in those pots that are biodegradable as you can tell and those uh, can just be torn apart you can see I've already torn some of those off where I gave them to someone and those can be planted usually I just direct sow that stuff I very rarely start cucumbers squash okra or melons inside but this year because of the fact that I was going to plant and then I realized the weather was going to get cold again. I sowed those there instead. I actually went ahead and sowed some in the garden as well and these were kind of like the backups. Just like these. These are my backup okras. Now as you can tell I've got them on the top row and they're doing just fine. Okra likes it hot so I figured that they would do just fine up here. It was kind of an experiment to see and they are. Those are thriving. That is Texas Hill Country okra and silver queen okra from baker creek and from hostels is where those are from all right i'm actually going to move these peppers down here so we can get a closer look at them i've got these three trays of peppers i've got some peppers right back here as well as some other eggplants those once i move tomatoes out those will be potted up as well as these because these won't be going out to the garden for at least another few weeks i also have one more tray of peppers and eggplants down here on the floor is your head spinning yet? This is why I've not done this video because my chaos makes sense to me. <laughs> but trying to explain it to other people makes me realize how unorganized it really is. <laughs> Here I've got Sugar Rush Peach, all of these. That is a really good pepper. Uh, lemon Drop, Nata Pino, Chocolate Beauty, The Golden California Wonder, Keystone Resistant Bell, Fish Pepper. By the way, can y'all see the baby variegation coming up on this baby fish pepper? How awesome is that? That's more not a pino. This is called manganji. I really like the sweet pepper. That's more manganji. Obviously, I really liked it. I did two rows of it. The habanada. It's growing really bushy. And corno de toro. Now, over here, I made a silly mistake, and I'll out myself to you. My mother grow, has this plant that she's had for years. It's this big pot. She's separated a bunch off. And it's called Oxalis. And it's like a false shamrock. It's actually edible. And I've always thought it's so beautiful. It's just like purple looking. It looks a lot like clover. And a while ago, I put um, some Oxalis bulbs on my Amazon wish list, just thinking, oh, well, the perennial garden's gonna come up, and that, you know, I was just kind of putting some stuff on there that I thought eventually might work for here. And they were sent to me by a precious viewer, and I was so excited that I came down immediately to the garden, and I grabbed, at the time, the greenhouse didn't look like this, <laughs> and I grabbed a tray, and I stuck the oxalis bulbs in, and I set the tray there, and I thought, oh, I'll remember, I'll remember that those are in there, but then I didn't, and, um, you know, a little while later, probably not, it, probably an embarrassingly short amount of time later, I forgot this quickly. Um, I was out here separating out plants and I was separating out these sh shishito peppers. And um, after I separated them, I sat here for a second and I thought, oh dang, <laughs> because there were three identical trays that were full of peppers. 
and I realized that one of them had my oxalis bulbs in it. And there was nothing for it but to wait. So now I have um, a bunch of oxalis sharing cups with shishito peppers. So I'll just have to separate these. And that was another thing I was going to do after I had a little more space. They started coming up just a few days ago. And when I saw them, I was like, oh, yay, there's my oxalis that I, that I misplaced in the greenhouse. It's in with the shishito peppers. <laughs> and I had to wait for them to all come up so I would know where they all were. So these all are having little, uh, they're having little pot buddies with them. I've also got some lemon spice jalapenos over here and more habanadas. Oh look, he's got an oxalis in with him too. As well as all of this over here, you'll see I've got some other plants. Now these are purchase plants. I've got some heirloom squash. These are okras. Um, these are sweet potato vines that are going to go into our tire planters. This is a pineapple sage. That's a Mr. Stripey tomato. Now you may notice anytime you see like a purchased tomato in my greenhouse, I always grab the one that has two plants in it because this is totally a two for one deal. Um, you can take these out and, and very simply just pull the roots apart like this okay so a little bit of damage but not a ton and and then just put these I'll put the big one back in this pot with some soil around it and I'll put this little guy in one of my empty pots here and now I paid 350 for two tomato plants instead of one and that is a good thing so if you ever see that, now if you see peppers that are two in one container, you can just plant those together. And squash are the same way. You can plant two of those right next to each other. Uh, things like peppers, I'll usually separate. Things like tomatoes, obviously I like to separate those out. I don't want to grow two right next to each other because they'll compete. Uh, peppers in enjoy holding hands though, so they like being planted with a little pepper friend. You may be wondering as well why I would purchase plants when I obviously have so many. And um, I actually held off this year because of everything that's going on. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't buying something that someone else needed. And after it became evident that there was not going to be any shortage of plants at my local grocery store, uh, we have a couple of local stores. Obviously, we've still had to go to the feed store and they have some plants. And then we have a local grocery store that sources all of their plants from Arkansas nurseries and I purchased plants at both of those places one because they had varieties that I didn't already have started but two because I believe we vote with our dollars and I, I just like to support the fact that I only bought like three plants from national suppliers most of these that I bought were from that local place and it was really purely to support them and because they had stuff I didn't have and because come on who doesn't like to buy plants <laughs> these are okras um, from that that local place same thing down here these are purchased plants these are actually all peppers and just those couple of tomatoes that I showed you guys but most of these are peppers my Tabasco peppers that went so crazy a few years ago were from this local nursery. I bought them at the grocery store. So I, I've bought my Tabasco peppers from them every year since. I think that's just about everything that's out here. I know you guys were wanting the exhaustive list of the tomatoes, but there's no way I can get through all of those without breaking any of them. So I'm not going to make that list until I've put them in the ground. I also have some bulbs. These are like lily and dahlia bulbs mostly that are going in the ground soon, now that those beds are filled. And then over here, I have a couple of little rose bushes from Stark Brothers that are going over in some containers by the kids garden. Well, there you have it. My beautiful, somewhat chaotic, uh, but full of life greenhouse. I use videos like this as motivation usually. Like my garden tours, I work so hard in my garden uh, leading up to garden tours because it's like whenever you have friends coming over for dinner and you kind of use that to motivate yourself to clean your house up really well. Um, 
me doing videos like this where it's like showing you everything this is um, you know my friends are coming over and I want I want my place to look its best and that's actually why I haven't done this the last couple of weeks because I wanted it you know I wanted it to look its best I wanted to take out all of the plants I never separated and the things that are dying in their pots and I didn't want a bunch of stuff to have a sunburn and uh, you know be so tall that it's shading out what's underneath it I didn't want to have a mess but I decided today when I came out here that I was gonna shoot it anyway because this spring is nothing like any of us expected it to be plans changed period that is the story of this spring and from that so many other good things can happen and really when I look in this space I don't want to look at the aftermath of a bunch of changed plans I want to look at the beauty and the life that happened in spite of them so that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I wanted to share my hopping around in my greenhouse that has no floor space and my dead crowded plants and all the stuff I bought at the store because I was just needed to buy something happy. This is my greenhouse which is full of life and life is full of beauty and mistakes. <laughs> so yeah, my greenhouse is full of life. Thank you guys for coming over today. I am really looking forward to sharing this gardening year with you. I bless you. Until next time.